When my wife and family died from melanoma in 1999, we decided we were going to do something about it. So myself and our three sons, we set up a charity in her name to raise awareness, publicise the disease and uh, to fund research to try and find a cure. She was diagnosed about 12 years earlier and she'd been in remission for about 12 years. And then it, it recurred in the, uh, in the lymph nodes under the arm, uh, in the womb and in the brain. And after that, it was four months before she died. We decided that the emblem would be the sweet pea because that was her favorite flower. And we've actually got a sweet pea named Mavanwi Townsend, which we uh, sell. And uh, lots of other promotions like the ultraviolet bracelets. But she'd spent her life working for others. And now we decided it was about time that somebody worked for her. Melanoma is one of our best kept secrets and uh, it is little known by the man in the street and we've really got to get this message over. So the message really is that if you have a mole that's changing in any way, if it's going black, irregular outlines, go to see the doctor now, not tomorrow, now, and you might just have changed, saved your life. Melanoma hit my family, uh, myself, when I was 40 years old, I had a melanoma removed. No one told us at that stage that it could be a genetic or it could be hereditary. Nobody mentioned the fact that my mum had ginger hair and that might be an important factor. So I didn't worry too much. I had all the lymph glands tested and so on. When our eldest daughter was 27, she showed me a mole on the top of her leg. I immediately sensed that that was melanoma. Please go quickly and have this sorted. And I thought, well, the good thing is, I don't think you've been sunburnt. Oh, I was, Dad. And she said, when I was 16, I was windsurfing in Brittany and I got very bad sunburn on that spot. Alarm bells rang. I don't think she was dealt with particularly quickly but the mole was eventually removed and we thought all was well. But six years later, she collapsed with brain tumours and was given two months to live. She was very feisty, our daughter, and said, hmm, no, I shall live longer than that. And she promised to take the surgeon out for a meal in two years' time. She almost made it. <laughs> she was a few weeks short. So since then, we felt that we ought to carry her spirit forward. She was teaching when she died, and her little class of five-year-olds desperately wanted to do something to help. So they made a film on sun safety. And this film was then distributed throughout the whole of the Southwest to every school. And it's through that that we met Harry Townsend, through that that we work with dermatology at, in Cornwall and we set up the melanoma project here and acted as a catalyst. And now we've got this magnificent educational unit on the road. We would desperately like a clinical input. We would like to have what you have in Australia where lay people in fact can train to spot moles going wrong because this is, melanoma is growing at such an alarming rate and it's so preventable, it's so easy to prevent it. Just don't burn and then check your skin. And if you do have a mole that's dodgy, please go and see somebody about it. The message is so simple and that's what we're trying to do. Melanoma appears as a mole or freckle on your skin. Um, generally speaking, all moles and freckles should have a clean, crisp edge, which shouldn't be blurry or ragged around the edge. They should be symmetrical, um, on both sides being exactly the same. There should be one colour. If you have any moles which are changing in colour, so they can be two-tone, three-tone, um, or they can change from light to dark or dark to light, please go and see your GP straight away. Basal cell carcinoma is a non-melanoma skin cancer. Basically, it's seen as a, a pale red lump on the skin. Um, it's pearly in colour, um, it can be red. It can also be seen as a slight dry um, sort of scaly patch, almost looks like an eczema patch. So if you have anything like that that hasn't healed up within a month or so, please go to your GP and get it checked out. 
Um, basal cell carcinomas are more common um, in men and they grow over a long period of time. They're also very common in the elderly sort of age group and um, they sort of build up over a period of years. A squamous cell carcinoma is a non-melanoma skin cancer. It's the second most common type of skin cancer. Um, again, it's more common in men and the elderly. It's the second most common in men. Um, in terms of appearance, it's crusty, ulcerated. It's very common sort of in terms of bleeding and things like that. In terms of protection from the sun, we recommend a hat. Um, you can get different styles of hats. Legionnaire styles of hats are fantastic because they provide protection to the back of your neck and also to your ears. Broad-rimmed hats, again, provide a wide amount of shade to your face. If you do wear a cap, we also recommend that you wear some sort of other protection, for example, sun cream on the back of your neck or the tops of your ears, because these are prone to getting burnt. Sunscreen can also be used as protection. Um, it's quite readily available in most shops. Uh, factor 15 is the minimum that we recommend, and this blocks out 92% of UVB rays. A factor 30 blocks out about 96% of UVB rays. We recommend that people with children, uh, fair hair, auburn hair, or people that burn quite easily wear a factor 30 plus, and then um, adults about a factor 15 minimum. Peak times from 11 o'clock till 3 o'clock during the day, so make sure that you apply your sun cream every two hours during peak times. So 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock to ensure you're protected. But in terms of sunglasses, try and get one that's got a British kite mark or UV protection on them, and also the ones which wrap around the eyes to provide maximum protection. Clothing ideally should be dark in colour, anything black or dark blue provides maximum protection. Lighter, looser clothing is best and anything that's got a tight weave. So if you hold it up to the window before you go out and you can't see through it, it provides maximum protection. If you are outside and you feel like you're still burning, so your sun cream's not working or your clothing is still feeling hot, the best thing to do is actually seek some shade. Shade can actually block out 75% of the UV rays. We as a charity want to increase the profile of this disease and we want to emphasise research and also to emphasise early diagnosis because early diagnosis is the best way that you can find a cure. We've got lots of supporters who are working hard to fund our research but we need more and we need more publicity to increase awareness.